Okay, continuing on into the red slice, we will be looking at the mean and standard deviation of a binomial probability situation. Now, let's take a look at this one, which often gives my students some trouble. Now, suppose that we have decided to test Clara, who works at the psychic center, to see if she really does have psychic abilities. Now, while talking to her on the phone, we'll thoroughly shuffle a standard deck of 52 cards, which of course is made up of 13 hearts, 13 spades, 13 diamonds, and 13 clubs. So let's quickly look over here at our deck of cards, and uh, we can see that we do in fact have that situation. You can see down through here that we have cards that are, first of all, we have a spade here, a diamond, a club, and there's a heart, and so on. So what we're going to do then is we're going to test Clara over the phone and uh, let her make her choice, uh, see if she can randomly uh, figure out what we're dealing with here. Because if she has psychic ability, she could could read my mind. She could read this deck of cards from a distance. And it uh, might work like this. So I'd say, okay, Claire, I like what's your first choice? And she would say, clubs. So I'd flip the first card, and she got it right. Wow. Now, what if the next card? And she would say, diamonds. And uh, she got it wrong. See that? Uh, let's try the next one. So we look in there and uh, say, diamonds. And the next time it's a heart, so she got that one wrong. Uh, the next one, Clara, what is it? And she says, uh, hearts. And so, yes, she got that one right. So is she psychic? Well, that's the question here. Is she psychic? She got two right. But is that really psychic, or was it just luck? Well, that's the beauty of statistics, is it can tell the difference between luck and whether something is in fact going on. Okay, it may not be psychic, it may be some type of a trick, something going on. But anyway, we could tell the difference from that, and that's what this is all about. So it's describing this. Notice that we will repeat the process until we have drawn a total of 18 cards and then gotten her guesses for each of those. Now, the way this works then is, first of all, we simply assume that Clara is not clairvoyant. In other words, we'll simply go ahead and see what randomness alone would predict. And we will calculate from this a mean and a standard deviation. So let's uh, go over here and take a look at our notes. Now, you can print these notes out. Uh, they are, are stored just above the video. And uh, these are the, the notes for this section. Notice that since it's a binomial problem, we're basically going to have to find n and p as we did before. We have our sample size, and then we've got a certain probability. Now, in this particular situation here, notice that uh, what we're looking at is a sample size of 18. We're choosing 18 cards. Now, for the probability, they go through quite a lot of confusion here, but her chance of getting the suit correct is one out of four because there are 13 cards in each suit. There are 52 cards in the deck. 13 out of 52 simply reduces to one and four. There are four suits. Each are equally likely. The probability of guessing the suit correctly is one out of four. Now, the first question in Alex, estimate the number of cards in the sample that she will guess correctly by giving the mean of the distribution. In other words, the expectation of the relevant random variable. That's just another way of saying that we want to take our value of n, which in our case is 18, and we will multiply that times p, the probability. So in this case, this is pretty easy, because what we're going to do is to grab our calculator. 
we're going to multiply in, which is 18, times our probability, which is 1 fourth, or 0.25, as a decimal. That means that she should get 4.5, so she should get 4 or maybe 5 of those cards with the correct suit, just based on chance alone. So let's go ahead and enter that. Okay, so she ought to get that many right just on chance. Now, if she starts getting a lot more than that, uh, maybe she is psychic. On the other hand, we can expect some leeway. It says quantify the uncertainty of your estimate by giving the standard deviation. Well, if you look back at the formula over here, you will notice that our standard deviation here is given as the square root of NPQ. So what we're going to do here is to grab our Alex calculator. We're going to take the uh, square root of n, which is our 18, that's the number of cards in our sample, multiply by p, which we said was 0.25, that's the chance of guessing the suit correctly, and then multiply by q, which is your chance of not guessing it correctly, and of course there'd be 3 fourths or 0.75 the probability for that. So the standard deviation, um, and they want this to three decimal places, is about 1.837, which means that um, 1.837. Now that means that we would expect her to get uh, around four or five cards correct, but she could get as many as maybe two more than that, so maybe she would get as many as seven. She might get as few as, if it's the low end, say four minus two. She might only get two right. Somewhere between two and seven would be pretty normal. That would just be what occurs by chance. So if she got anything in there, we would have to say, well, she could have just been lucky and got that many. Now, she starts getting uh, 13, 14, 15 out of that group of 18 cards right. Then we might begin to think that something is going on that's not based on chance or randomness. Let's check that and see that we are correct. So this is mean and standard deviation of a binomial probability in Alex statistics.